Hi, welcome to the Seaside Lane channel. I'm Morgan Lane. I'm a mama to three little girls, a wife to a firefighter, an author and illustrator of a little prayer devo, an artist, and a happy homemaker, and most of all, a big lover of Jesus. In today's video, you'll find me tidying up the master bedroom, which my husband and I also like to refer to as our sanctuary, making the bed, cleaning off desks, folding laundry, and then sharing some tea and Bible painting with you from the latest book I've read. Thanks for joining me. Get up and clean, clean alongside me. There's so many benefits to making your bed first thing in the morning. It starts the day off with a feeling of accomplishment. A sense of calm comes to the room. You'll have better sleep when you crawl under the sheets that night. The room automatically feels organized the moment you pull up the covers. You have more focus and relaxation. I wasn't one to always do this, but once you get in the habit, it's hard to break. My husband often teases on the weekends, don't make the bed, just leave it messy. But once you get so in the habit, it's difficult to ignore it. Psalm 3.5 says, I lie down and sleep. I wake again because the Lord sustains me. I spend so many hours in my bed each day, week, year. It's something I choose to tend to. Not only the sleep that the Lord gives me to recharge, but the fact that being married, our room is a place I hope can be a retreat and a sanctuary for my husband and I to dream, plan, and want to be at the day's end. One of my favorite authors, Robin Jones Gunn, has a book series called Haven Makers, and that's exactly what the women in the books desire for their hearts and their homes to be a place of safety and refuge for those that they love by the end of the day. I've moved on to tidying my desk. On the right side, I like to keep all my makeup and my nail polish that I use daily. On the left side, I like to keep my writing materials, painting, and drawing materials. I never used to have a place really to do my makeup, but it's been so perfect to have this little mirror in the corner by the window for natural light. Audrey Hepburn's beauty tips go like this. For attractive lips, speak words of kindness. For lovely eyes, seek out the good in people. For a slim figure, share your food with the hungry. For beautiful hair, let a child run his or her fingers through it once a day. For poise, walk with the knowledge that you'll never walk alone. People, even more than things, have to be restored, renewed, revived, reclaimed, and redeemed. Never throw anybody out. Remember, if you ever need a helping hand, you'll find one at the end of your arm. As you grow older, you'll discover that you have two hands, one for helping yourself and the other for helping others. The beauty of a woman is not in the clothes she wears, the figure that she carries, or the way that she combs her hair. The beauty of a woman must be seen from her eyes, because that is the doorway to her heart, the place where love resides. The beauty of a woman is not in a facial mold, but true beauty in a woman is reflected in her soul. It's the caring that she lovingly gives, the passion that she shows, and the beauty of a woman with each passing year only grows. I started to tidy my husband's desk, but when I came back and sat down, I found his note card of a to-do list. We try to write down every night the five things we want to accomplish the next day on the note card. Physically having it reminds you to check off those things. I got a little distracted and I used a note card to write him a, a love note to leave on his desk for when he gets home from work. Sometimes as a wife, it's little things like this that can make a difference in their day the next morning. Here's his to-do list. And here's my love note. 
go write your husband a love note. As a family of five, laundry is something that I have to do on the daily. Let me dramatically slow motion dump it out for you. And then fall on top of it, pretending like I want to take a nap instead of folding all this laundry. I try to do a load every single morning. I wash it in the morning, dry it in the afternoon. It sits in the basket, usually overnight. Until the next morning, I fold that load as I start the next. In my prayer devotional that I wrote for firefighter wives, I tell them at the beginning of the book to pick a place of prayer. I mention that my place of prayer for my husband is when I fold his clothes. When I fold his items and I put them away, it's not only an act of service, but it reminds me to pray for all the things that he has going on in the day and in the week. Before praying for those in my family as I folded, I actually used to really resist laundry. I would let it pile up, or I'd wash six loads in a day and then have a mountain of laundry to fold. Which, no judgment, if you have a mountain of laundry, go grab them all. After you make your bed, dump them out and start folding with me. But it's really helped to be able to pray over my family as I fold. And also to just have the mindset shift as a homemaker and a haven maker and housewife that my job really is to wake up and do the laundry and do the dishes and prep the food and serve my family and do those things and if I was going to show up to any other job I would do so with care and attention to detail and to get the task done. That's completely been the mind shift I've had to have with laundry to complete it each day and not fall behind. I'll also note that my brain kind of works room from room, so since I was in the master bedroom tidying up, I tend to just fold first my husband's clothes and then my own clothes, and then I just toss the kids' clothes in a separate basket so when I get to going to clean their room, either they can fold them and put them away or if it's easier, there's not that many, I'll just pull, I'll put them away for them. But it, helps my brain just to do one person at a time to get it done. If not, I feel scattered and I'm folding all different clothes all over. I try to complete the task all the way through and hang up the last few items before I move on to the next thing. I usually start the robot vacuum in whatever room is finished so it cleans for the rest of the time. Now you get to see my vibe. I was going to share this book my husband and I are reading, but he ended up taking it to work with him, so I didn't have the quotes to refer to. So I was going to share a different book. I recently have read When Striving Cease by Ruth Chow Simmons, who is an incredible author and book mentor and illustrator. And this book mostly talks about grace, I would say, and God's grace and redemption. So one of the favorite quotes that she talked about in this book said, God loves us so much that he rescued us from the grip of anything else that promised to satisfy, and instead he made us belong to him alone. So I started thinking about this idea of being redeemed and just we gain possession of something through payment and how that payment really was Jesus and his sacrifice and his grace so I wanted to paint that in my bible and just remember that and in the different points that she made in this book and I would recommend reading it it's really 
interesting. It talks a lot about her childhood as well, going from Asian culture to America and just what that was like and, and different expectations and striving, but just Jesus ultimately covering it all with grace. And So the verse that I chose to paint it next to is Isaiah 43, verse 1. It says, Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, and you are mine. So that's my prayer for you today. That you would know that you are redeemed, and that you are loved, and the status of your laundry, or your floors, or your desks, or your home, ultimately don't mean anything. We should do it with, with service and care for our families, but that we do have the grace of our Lord Jesus, and that he covers us, and that he loves us, and he wants to walk through us as we we mother and wife and homemake. Thanks for joining me today with the cleaning of our, our marriage sanctuary and a little tea time, Bible time. My prayer is that you will cease to strive in the things that need released, and that you will fall and abide and rest in God's ultimate beautiful grace. Bye, friends.